Hello everyone, welcome back to CR Investor's ongoing tutorial series on learning technical analysis. This is uh, Brian Beamish, Canadian Rational Investor, and this is the Williams Percentage R tutorial. Uh, this is uh, part one of uh, our Momentum series, uh, Understanding and Using the Willy Indicator. Uh, basically, uh, Willy is my overbought and oversold indicator, uh, and this is part one of the Momentum series. Uh, I'd encourage you uh, through this uh, tutorial to uh, go to the uh, Google Docs uh, link that you see on the screen and uh, pull down this slideshow presentation so you can follow along. Uh, you can find this link on the YouTube page um, of this uh, tutorial uh, as well. You can go to my website, therationalinvestor.ca, uh, and follow the links uh, in the seminar section. Um, and uh, this uh, tutorial should be about 10 to 15 minutes long. There's lots of information in this tutorial that has to be covered. Uh, so I'll try and move as fast as I can, but uh, as I said, uh, a lot, a lot of information we have to look at. So let's get to it. Uh, the topics we're going to cover today, obviously, uh, we're going to uh, uh, define what the Williams Percentage R study is. Uh, we're going to uh, look at the five key takeaways of the study itself. Uh, we're then going to go on to uh, my adaptations of the Williams Percentage R, why I uh, did what I did, um, and how the Willy was born. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Willy on market state, and uh, that's really important uh, because uh, that's really the big takeaway of this indicator. Uh, we're going to look at uh, price patterns within uh, conditions of the indicator itself. Uh, and then we're going to finish off the tutorial uh, with how I use this indicator in conjunction with the MACD indicator uh, to give me an overall picture of momentum. And uh, for those that are interested and wondering, uh, the MACD indicator uh, tutorial is part two of this series. So the two of them go hand in hand. All right, moving right along. So uh, first and foremost, let's uh, define what the Williams percentage R is. Uh, basically, uh, this is a momentum indicator uh, measuring overbought and oversold uh, levels. Uh, it's very similar to a stochastic oscillator or a relative strength index in that it just moves uh, between two extremes back and forth. Uh, it was developed by a gentleman by the name of Larry Williams, and it compares a stock's close to the high-low range over a certain period of time. Uh, usually the out-of-the-box setting is 14 days, uh, but as you'll see, uh, you're not limited to just those 14 days. In fact, you can uh, alter a lot of these indicators to your liking. Uh, the indicator itself can be used to determine market entry and exit points, you know, for example, coming out of the overbought zone or coming out of the oversold zone. Uh, the Williams percentage R itself produces values from 0 to minus 100. Uh, a reading over minus 20, so that's minus 20 to 0, usually indicates an uh, asset is overbought, while a reading below minus 80, that would be minus 80 to minus 100, suggests an asset is oversold. Uh, as always with these tutorials, uh, you know, I like to include uh, links uh, on the net links uh, for reference purposes. So if you feel like looking into this more, you know, this is basically the, the definition and I've pulled this down from Investopedia, but you're more than welcome to go on their site and uh, look into it further. All right, um, the next slide here, basically, we're just going to take a look at the Williams percentage R itself. Um, uh, you know me, I love to use tradingview.com. I think they're very good uh, charts. And the chart that you see on your screen here is the SPY, or the S&P 500 uh, Depository Receipts, uh, the Exchange Traded Fund ETF. Um, and uh, we've put on here, we've just gone into the indicator setting, and we've just added the traditional Williams percentage. Percentage R study. 
Basically, there's five key takeaways that we can take away from this study. Number one um, is the market or is the reading of the indicator itself uh, above or below minus 50, and minus 50 would be this middle line along here. Um, and uh, you know, very simply put, uh, a reading above minus 50, the market's bullish. A reading below minus 50, the market's bearish. Uh, so with that in mind, um, you know, you can just take a nice simple barometer reading of uh, any asset just by saying, okay, is it the Williams percentage R above or below minus 50? Um, sort of moving on, the second uh, takeaway is the reading above minus 20. If it is, then that is into what this indicator traditionally considers overbought conditions. So you can see that you know several times on this price chart, uh, the market entered overbought conditions. Um, third takeaway is the market below minus 80. And same sort of thing, just exact opposite. Uh, readings up below minus 80, markets oversold. <coughs> Now, two sort of esoteric and um, um, takeaways uh, from this indicator um, that you're just going to have to expand your mind a little bit is uh, four and five on this chart, chart: embedded conditions and market structure. And so, this is you're going to have to put on your thinking cap a little bit on this. But long and short of it here is um, this indicator can. Uh, it can and does uh, move from overbought and oversold conditions um, back and forth. And what we find here is that um, if you see where an indicator just sits in the o embedded or overbought condition, in this case uh, where my mouse is uh, above tw uh, minus 20, um, it's indicative in self of a trending market. You know, conversely, this market can uh, this uh, indicator can oscillate um, back and forth uh, between overbought and oversold conditions. And it, when you see this, it's basically indicative of a range market. So, it's important to understand that this indicator can sit in uh, overbought and oversold conditions for lengths of time, and that in itself is a message in that if you see this embedded condition, it's in indicative of a very strong market and indeed this trend was very strong. <clears throat> and lastly market structure. As technicians we're always hunting for market structure. So basically what does that mean? Um, bullish uh, scenarios we see a lot of W's in indicators and price. Bearish market conditions we see a lot of M's in price. So we can actually look at indicators themselves and see whether we can see any of this kind of market structure. You know, so for example, these tops up here, they look more like M's than W's. Um, and when the M actually comes in, um, it's a powerful message into itself. Uh, similarly, at the bottoms, we can see W's form. Um, and again, this is talking about market structure. Um, you know, W's themselves are indicative of bullish conditions. So, uh, you know, that's a huge message that you can take away from, uh, from this indicator. So just to review, five key takeaways. Is the market above or below 50? That's an uh, minus 50. That's an excellent just sort of general vote on, on whether the market's bullish or bearish. Uh, is the market uh, above minus 20? Uh, it is technically overbought. Is the market uh, below minus 80? It is technically oversold. Um, do we have embedded conditions uh, implying a trending market or are we uh, in uh, oscillation implying a range market? and what is the market structure of the indicator itself or basically what is the indicator telling you that the sort of momentum, the trend in the short term of the, uh, of the market structure is. So. Moving right along. 
All right, so this is an important slide. In essence, this is Cry's adaptation of the Williams percentage R. So you need to understand that I basically developed this indicator um, as uh, noted here. The Willie was born out of a need as a broker, and I was a broker for a number of years, uh, for a tool to prevent me from buying or selling into markets that were overextended. And, you know, this chart here, we're taking a look at the gold ETF. Uh, and, you know, here's an excellent example of how Willie basically kept you out of trouble. Um, it doesn't mean it isn't a, the correct trade, i.e. selling, uh, you know, I want to be a seller here. It just means that there probably is going to be a better time and or a better trade location to do that transaction. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, first and foremost, like we said, the if we look at the chart from the previous page, you'll notice that the Williams percentage R is really jumpy in its sort of natural state. It's zipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So a thing I learned a long time ago was that if we slow indicators down, then the signals that they do give actually become uh, much more powerful. So, you know, if we look at just the indicator itself, you'll notice that, you know, through this entire down move in price, by me slowing it down, you can see that basically the indicator just sat below this minus 50 level, which pretty much gave you a correct reading on, on the market structure. Uh, conversely, you know, by slowing the indicator down again, um, you know, as the market started to turn up and the indicator uh, being slowed, it just sat above the, the minus 50 level. So very, very good idea um, when you're using these momentum oscillators. If you slow the indicator down, you get a little bit crisper uh, message. Um, so that was the first adaptation as I slowed the indicator from 14 to 21 days. The second adaptation was is that I wanted to I wanted to get you know really slow the indicator down even more, so I added a 13 period exponential moving average to the raw reading. Now what ended up happening here was that by slowing the indicator down even more. Um, Whenever the 13 period exponential moving average got into either the oversold or overbought conditions, it really highlighted that either, number one, we were very close to the end of a, of a cycle move. And for those Elliott Wave people, you know, they, you know, we believe that basically market moves in cycles. So, you know, this slowed William percentage R with the moving average. The moving average, when it got into the overbought, oversold conditions, it was an excellent proxy on, uh, on being the end of cycles. Um, and what I found as a broker was, and this is sort of what gives rise to this notion of stupid conditions, is keep in mind that the public always buys at the top and sells at the bottom. So what I'd often find is that, you know, when the moving average, this 13 period moving average got into the overbought or oversold condition, this is when my phone would start ringing like crazy as a broker. And the clients, you know, basically being the public and doing exactly what they're supposed to do would be seeing price action basically going parabolic and would in essence be calling up in this example when Willie got stupid this is typically when my phone would be ringing and the clients would be saying sell 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 and as I pointed out here you know it doesn't necessarily mean that the sell you know selling you know in this instance gold that selling gold was a good idea because you know it looks like ultimately it was a good idea it's just this wasn't a very good trade location and actually the market was panicking here a bit and you would have been far better off had you wanted to be a seller of gold just to wait and let this stupidness in the market resolve itself. Conversely, uh, you know, those that watch this uh, rally, you know, by the time we got to this point, you can see price was starting to go parabolic and Willie's nice and overbought and gee whiz, as a broker, guess what? The phone would start ringing like crazy because a retail customer would want to be buying here. Again, not the smartest idea. Maybe gold is a buy but just not during this condition. So like as I said when I started, 
this uh, indicator itself was born out of a need to prevent me from buying or selling in the market. So we're overextended because the easiest way to lose uh, customers as a retail broker is to sell at the bottom and buy at the top. That's probably the last trade you'll do for them. Um, all right, so hopefully that explains uh, how the Willy uh, was born, how it's constructed, um, and uh, what its really key takeaway is. Um, you know, basically I finish off with the idea, um, while stupidness in itself is not a justification for taking the opposite side of the trade, used in conjunction with other indicators, that condition should be supportive of your trade hypothesis. So. Moving right along, <clears throat> here you see, and I'm a big fan of using multiple indicators to confirm signals, and I like to use uh, the Willy, which is the bottom indicator on this chart, in conjunction with a MACD uh, histogram. Um, so first off on this slide we say embedded conditions often confuse overbought and oversold indicators. So you know again, you know, the very strong market, market's overbought. And embedded, right? It's just sat in this overbought zone for quite a while. If one adds a raw momentum indicator, in this case, like I said, the MACD histogram. Um, to your analysis, overbought and oversold conditions coupled with divergences in like uh, the uh, the uh, complementary indicator um, often lead to rewarding trading opportunities. So Willie basically tells us, are we overbought or oversold? So yes, we are overbought. MACD, the histogram basically tells us, all right, we have a bearish momentum divergence working. So we put the two together. If we get price action that confirms uh, a short entry signal, then, hey, we could take the trade. Or, you know, just basically if you are long, maybe it's an idea to, to maybe take some profits. Um, I'll just finish this off with just the basic idea that if you were just looking at price alone, you would have never seen this setup. And so this is a really, really good confirmation of why you should keep an eye on momentum um, because, you know, just looking at price alone as it made higher highs, you would think everything was fine. Uh, but uh, studying momentum and incorporating that into your analysis, you would have seen that, uh-oh, there's, there's problems here. All right, so that basically brings us to the end of this tutorial. Uh, lots of information. If you need to rewind it and watch it again, uh, that's perfectly understandable. As I said before, I think it's a really good idea to pull this slideshow presentation down and just have it sort of side by side with this video, and you can get that at this link here. Uh, I'd encourage you to go to my website and check out the information there, uh, as well as this tutorial. I have a whole bunch of tutorials on other things. Um, and uh, by all means, if you uh, uh, if you can and you'd like to, please uh, feel free to follow me uh, on Twitter uh, at CR Investor. So have yourselves a great day. I hope you've enjoyed this information and all the best in your trading endeavors. Bye now.